Okay, well, first this recitation is more or less a continuation of last week's recitation. I'm going to briefly discover and discuss a number of tips and tricks for assignment five. I won't be repeating the description of the assignment as I assume that other TAs and Adam have done this in detail. And since this assignment is due in only a few days, you probably know the description by now. Just one quick bit of statistics. There have been a total of three people as of this morning who've gotten the full extra credit, 110 points, including part five. Maybe about half the class has everything up to part four done. So maybe about 150 students have finished this assignment. The rest of you guys, I assume, have a couple days to cram on it. And hopefully this will help you get past any points you're stuck. Quick background, for those of you familiar with computer architecture, one piece of advice, if possible, you really want to use GPU to help solve the first couple stages. Basically, of course, CPU lets you run complex operations in sequence, with a couple cores, some small level parallelism. GPU through your video card is capable, of course, running thousands of threads all simultaneously and is wonderful for, again, breaking hashes. If you look at the programs we suggested, there is John Ripper and of course Hashcat. Hashcat does have support for GPU. And I'm showing an example here. If you go to the Hashcat website link that we provided, get the latest version, which is 5.1. If you get this from AppGet or from a repository, you might grab version four, which doesn't support as many video cards, of course. And you run Hashcat on preferably a direct machine, don't run it in the VM, you should get something similar to this. You should see OpenCL support for the full video card. Difference being you can break step one, step two, in probably about 35 seconds instead of an hour. If you get OpenCL support for just the CPU, again, it'll take roughly an hour to break. If you get some sort of OpenCL error, it could take much longer to, to do this. OpenCL support is built into many video card drivers directly. If you get the latest NVIDIA GPU drivers from NVIDIA or AMD for an AMD card, of course, you should have OpenCL directly in the system. This is a screenshot here is running hashcat.exe. If you get the binaries from the Hashcat website, EXEs are obviously for Windows. The .bin files are the Linux versions for Mac or Ubuntu or whatever else you may be running. If you're running this on, let's say, a dual boot machine or a Linux machine that has direct access to hardware, you might want to Google some other help to see if you can get OpenCL support in Ubuntu, which is not added by default. Again, it depends on what video card driver, but Here's a quick example of a website, basic instructions, how to install OpenCL support. And then in this case, their screenshot shows OpenCL support for uh, i7 core CPU. If you run it in a VM, you definitely can get OpenCL support for your CPU. This is a virtual machine running Hashcat 64. This was tested on again part one, broke part one in roughly an hour. If you have a dual boot machine, you can run, for example, this is Hashcat 64 and under dual boot, again, notice OpenCL support announcing that you have GeForce, uh, GeForce video or ATI video card supported. And again, you can break things quite a bit faster. Other than that, again, for those of you who are starting late, we strongly recommend experimenting with parts one, two, and three to use some third-party program. John Ripper is sometimes better at breaking some things. Hashcat's better at breaking other parts. Part three, again, keep in mind what Adam mentioned. He said, look into dictionaries, extremely important. If you try to brute force part three, you might be waiting for quite a long time. Part four, again, most people are getting progress with this, but the basic idea is still pretty simple. You can't reverse a hash, so 
what you're more or less trying to do is build some sort of Python program. Don't doesn't need to be Python, it can be other programming languages as well. Anything that can actually support creating a hash. Python hashing libraries are excellent. We recommend Python. Basically, try every combination of five lowercase characters that are possible. Have your program generate a hash for each possible combination and compare the output of that hash with your code and if it gets a match, then you have success. Roughly speaking, people are saying that part four is taking roughly one or two hours on a modern PC to finish. So you can speed this up through parallelism or through other techniques, but get started early. Consider even if your program is working perfectly that you may need two hours or a little bit more to get an answer for your particular hash. Definitely try out the suggested hashes to make sure your code is able to decode or break hashes the same way that the suggested hashes on the assignment page show. Part five, let me pull up the description here for a second. Is a lot of people have asking a lot of questions about. We have a couple hints and trip, tricks for part five. The main suggestion on part five is take the assignment, start with your part four program, and simply discard the last statement. You want to solve the same exact problem, but instead of knowing in part four, as you see here, that you know that the password is five characters, lowercase letters, you don't know that. This hash is going to be a little bit more difficult to break. It's not going to be impossible to break. Again, since as mentioned, three of your classmates have already broken it. This could be, say, six characters, lowercase letters. It could be seven characters, lowercase letters. It could be five characters with letters, numbers, uppercase and lowercase. It could be symbols as well. Uh, we're not going to tell you exactly what it is, so unfortunately you have to do some experimentation. You might want to try a couple theories, a couple ideas, but simply running your existing code from part four, solve part five, is pretty much all you need to do to break part five. The challenge, of course, for part five is to speed up your code. There's a number of tricks you can use to make your code run in parallel. Your code, of course, by default is running only on the CPU. If you have any background in any video card development, any GPU programming, you can obviously offload onto GPU. That's not probably the simplest way to do that. There are third party resources. Google has a cloud computing platform. Microsoft Azure also has a GPU platform. You can create software that can break this fairly quickly. You can simply use multiple cores or even multiple computers and brute force in a very simple technique just with your code you have here. One suggestion that came up on Piazza, which is really nice, was simply fix the first letter of your hash. Run multiple copies of your hashing code. If you check your Windows Task Manager, look at core usage, a typical part four program running will probably use maybe about 25% of a four core CPU. If you have a four core, four threaded CPU, like an i5, simply run four copies of your program simultaneously and split up the key range. In other words, have say A through H being run by one copy of your program. Make another copy of your program that just checks I through M, whatever. Have another copy of your program for M through let's say S or T. Another copy of your program running T through Z. Again, these are just numbers off, names off the top of my head. You can scale these more appropriately if you want. If you've got eight core, split them up by that. If you've got 16 core or higher or can run this on multiple machines, you could run 26 copies of the program for each letter of the alphabet. And again, do not take lowercase letters or uppercase letters 
or numbers or any of these as a hint about the program. But break up the code so it only attacks a certain range and then uses and analyzes the rest as a key range with all possible variations. And you should hopefully have a better chance of breaking part five than otherwise. Again, blindly just trying anything might be slower than taking a theory. See exactly how much longer it would take, say with a six character lowercase hash. See how long it would take with maybe five character with all keys valid. And again, make some series. Try to figure out what the key range is. Try to guess at how long it's gonna to take to test the range thoroughly and attack some of the smaller ranges first. See if you get some success, attack larger ranges. Again, the TAs are definitely available to help you out with any of this area. We can't tell you exactly what the key is, and we're not going to, but we're more than help, more than willing to help you out with, again, helping to make your code run in parallel or solve any other type of problems. Beyond that, again, submitting the code, doesn't, no one seems to be having too much trouble with it. Once you get your output, put it into a readme file, submit it, and Gradescope should definitely tell you exactly what your grade is. And if you have any questions, please post to Piazza or post privately to the TAs and Adam and we should get back to you with anything you need. With that, let me just open it up to any questions.